Hey everybody, and welcome back to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Jonah Dew. I'm Will Meadows. I'm Ryan Pills. And I'm Kevin Delp, and today we are sharing our top five board games we wished we had played in 2020. Yeah, so we just finished wrapping up our top 10 games of 2020 video. Definitely check that out. Be sure to like and uh, comment on it. There is a drawing for prizes there, so definitely check it out. But this is something a little different. These are kind of the runner-ups of if we'd actually played these, they would have been <laughs> our, in our list. Very because in researching our top 10s, I was just like, man, there's so many great games out there. And this would totally be in my top 10 if I had just played it. <laughs> so uh, we're going to all share a number of games that we think were really cool and we'd love to check out and we think you should check out too. So let's get started. Kevin? Let's do it. Number five actually just arrived on the doorstep. Oh. <laughs> For me, number five is Rococo. This is from Eagle Griffin Games. And I just realized that this whole list is going to be 15 games that I wish I had played before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this game. 20. It's an know? older game that just came out with a deluxe edition. So beautiful. Oh. And uh, this is a game for one to five players. It takes about one to two hours to play. Arts from Ian O'Toole. Uh, you are an owner of a distinguished tailoring business, endeavoring to increase your prestige. The uh, theme is interesting, cool. Um, it looks gorgeous. I mean, uh, compared to the original game cover, this one knocks Night it out day. of the park. So I'm real. This probably wouldn't have made it. I mean, it's cool. So there you go. go. <laughs> So, my first one I'd like to share is the King of Tokyo Dark Edition. Dark Edition. This is basically the cartoony uh, Batman Forever turned into Batman Begins Gritty Nitty. Ooh. Nitty Gritty. How would you say that? Like that. Gritty Nitty is fine so, too. Uh, they <laughs> actually have some photos of the two games side by side with all of the monsters in it and showing their dark versions of themselves and it looks really cool but not only is it just a new face to the game there are also some new uh rules that they've added mm -hmm. to, for the dark edition and that is why i want to check it out because king of tokyo is a awesome game it's one of the first games that i really got into and i'd love to <laughs> i'd love to see what they do with the dark edition yeah ryan introduced me to king of tokyo originally i thoroughly enjoyed it i'm interested in that one as well one of the games that i wish i'd had a chance to play this year was honey buzz from elf creek games i think sarah actually did a review of it and uh, it, it's just super cool looking. It, cool. it has a lot of game strategy going on. The components for it look really fun and nice. You've got like these amber uh, beads and things in the game that just look like honey and really delicious components. I heard a lot of good things about it. She thoroughly enjoyed it. Delicious components. Delicious, delicious. components. Okay. All right. Didn't get to play it. Would be interested in playing Honey Buzz. Yep. All right, so I've got one. And uh, kind of number five on my list is Whistle Mountain. And realistically, so many things I've heard that are great about this game and I just didn't play it and I would really just love to play it because it sounds like my type of game and uh, it might have even it been is. in you one of like our <laughs> top 10 lists pretty high up yeah. and I just didn't play it so I want to yeah. Yeah. put it on the list number four all right so my number four on the list is on Mars I just really, I understand that the difficulty level, the weight of this game is we were like talking really about this high. earlier. I know it's really, I saw it was really, I saw the He's box. ready for the challenge though. I just want to play it. It You're looks ready for good. The experience. Yeah, I'm ready to devote two or three or four or five hours <laughs> for the game if it's fun. I'd like to try out the game 100 Tori from Pencil First Games. Those guys put out a lot of fun stuff. Their games just genuinely are enjoyable, generally are genuinely enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, the art style for it is really simple, but I always like like the Asian and Japanese and different themes that... Vincent Dutre. 
Right, there you go. Oh. Even even up it even further. Uh, it just had a nice look to it. It looked like a fun weight game. I know you did try it. Yeah, I have it, and we can give it to you to you try. Give it a, give it a run. Through. I want to know how many games are going to be on our games we didn't play that somebody else on this couch owns. Right. Right? <laughs> that they're hoarding, and they didn't bring over so we could play Whistle Mountain. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So mine is Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. What? We have all played Pandemic Legacy Season 1, I think... I don't know, John. I've never played, played it. Oh, oh yeah. you have missed out. We need it to get was, zero and play it. It was yeah. a huge mm. life event because it was just weeks of playing this game to get through the whole through uh, the campaign. Season one. Yeah, season one. So I want to see what they did with season zero and why is it a prequel, you know, mm. and not a sequel? I think it's like I, Cold War. I yeah, heard. yeah, Cold so. War. I, I don't know. It sounds really interesting. I want to check it out. It's from Z Man Games. That would be my number four. So my number four actually was already on someone else's list. Honey Buzz hey. from Elf Creek Games. I've heard really cool things about it, not only from Sarah, but also people online yeah. saying this game is amazing. It should be in your top 10 list. Uh, the gameplay is amazing. The artwork, I, I'm looking at the artwork and I'm like, this does look really cool. Elf Creek Game has done amazing yeah, jobs with done. their other games, like Atlantis Rising as they reprinted that and the second edition. I mean. They've been knocking things out of the park, so... Yeah, the little hex comb build-out thing. Like, it just looks like there's fun stuff going on. So, um, Merchants of the Dark Road is another game that just came out with, uh, kickstarted. So, uh, Elf Creek Games, congrats, man. I'm looking forward to Honey Buzz. Number three. My number three is Osprey Games' Merv, The Heart of the Silk Road. And this game... Is from um, Ian O'Toole artwork as well. So I think artwork really just draws me in. Yeah. I mean, when you don't have a chance to play a game and you're judging it by this looks cool, right. I mean, that's where so. it's got to start at. Good art. So, Merv, I've heard some interesting things about the game. It says it's a tense, economic game charting the rise and fall of the greatest city in the world. So, I like economic games. And we were talking about tension earlier tonight, and I'm interested in what this game brings to the table. So, it's Merv. Interesting word. Merv, yeah. And like ERV. But uh, I'd love to check it out from Osprey Games. I would love to check out Cosmic Encounter Duel. That makes sense. From Fantasy Flight Games. Like the original Cosmic Encounter is in my top 10 mm. video of all time. Of all time games. Yeah, check that out. So uh, I want to know what they did to make it able to be a dueling game. Uh, obviously, it must be for only two players. The original Cosmic Encounter has a lot of negotiation and, you know, will you go in with me as we attack this person? That sort of thing. So how did they make that work with the duel? That's what I want to know. Cosmic Encounter tool, duel tool uh, is my number three. <laughs> I haven't really heard a whole lot about this game, but the idea intrigues me. The game Half Truth from Studio 21 oh, is I a have party game, mm -hmm. trivia yeah. game, where apparently you don't have to be good at trivia, which I'm not, uh, but it's still fun. I think it's interesting that Ken Jennings, the Jeopardy champion. That's uh, my guy. Yeah, I know. He helped design the game. <laughs> All right, it's I'm got in. a great lineup. I'm it in. Seems like an interesting idea. I didn't get to try it. And the, even, again, the artwork looks fun for it. I would love to try out Half Truth. All right, so the next game on my list is Winter Kingdom. Now, here's the thing. I might have cheated a little bit because I may have played one turn. Oh, you did on a Saturday morning board game, game show? On one of our Saturday morning board game shows. <laughs> and I played one Sucked turn, and I went, I'd like this game. So, Winter Kingdom is cool. going to be number three on my list. Number two. My number two is Warp's Edge from Renegade, ugh, Renegade Game Studios. Uh, I'm not normally a solo game yeah, I was gonna say, player a solo game, when right? it comes to yeah. board games, um, but this game looks really slick. The art is just really cool. I'm interested in how they have that bag building mechanic incorporated. Um, I just I want to have played it. <laughs> so Warp's Edge, check it out and let me know in the comments how it is. <laughs> I'm in a similar boat. The game Unsettled from Orange Nebula looks beautiful. Like it's got an interesting box. It's just one half of it's white, the other half of it's purple. The artwork for the components and the card art looks like super fantastical. Uh, it's a cooperative dice rolling game. That's really all I know about the mechanics for the game. But uh, it's got the delicious Delicious looking, comments again? Yeah, the delicious looking artwork. Uh, delicious. It looks cool. Check out Unsettled and let me know. <laughs> there you cool. go. Number two for me is going to be The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Ooh. And again, it may have been hoarded by someone on this couch. <laughs> 
that I've, won't let me play it. I I've just want to play it. Porn. I just want to have to play it. I just want to play it. I've played this, this game so, so many times. So many times. It's he great. Says. It's I great. just want to play it once. <laughs> I wish I we would hang out with each other and play games. I know. I wish we I wish we played games together and stuff. That would be fun. Uh, my number two is from Delicious Games. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't even know. Did, great name. Who this was game it? is Praga Caput Regni. Okay. Right, it's uh, I guess it's Latin. The, under the radar. Anyway, on Delicious Games is a newer company that put out underwater cities. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, I love that game. This game is where you are citizen of a medieval in medieval Prague, and you're doing building projects and things like that uh, to gain the king's favor. The um, one hang up to me is it says the game time is 30, 220 minutes. So I don't know if it's like player count. Maybe. Player count oh, really, yeah. really matters. 30 per person or. Probably. Because yeah. <laughs> if it's one, it's a one to four player game, which wow. makes sense. So yeah. if you're playing, and I like playing like games that do play three or four players, so it sounds like this would probably be a longer type game. But the theme sounds cool. I've liked what Delicious Games has already put out. So, um, Praga. I'm just going to call it Praga. The number one game on my list that I'm curious to learn about and I wish I had had a chance to play this year is Decipher from Heidelberg Games. It's got art from Quan Chai Maria. It just looks really interesting. It's again like a party type game. It's a word game where you're trying to I think it's give... in the mail. Is it in the mail? <laughs> like, Dreams do come it's true. It's not at the doorstep yet, but I've heard it's in the mail from Germany. <laughs> cool. I'm looking forward to trying that one out. Yeah, I think good. that'll be a fun one for everybody to play. Uh, we enjoy word games, I think, for the yep. most part. Yep. I enjoy those puzzly type of given a clue that only certain people will get and then other people won't be able to figure out types of things. Cool. That one looks beautiful again. The way you play though, almost no one can figure it out. <laughs> this is true. true. Yeah. Yeah. I like true. watching everyone's reaction to <laughs> Oh, what Will gave the clue about? again. He said the word. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Gonna check that one out as soon as I get a chance. Maybe sooner than I thought. That's pretty cool. Cool. The number one game on my list that I wish I had a chance to play is Castles of Tuscany. Ooh. So here's the thing. I really... Uh, is it related to Castles of Burgundy? It's a sequel I heard or something, something. like that. Yeah. I like that game. Yeah. This game looks good. I, I didn't get a chance to play it, so I don't know much, but I want to play it. I think I heard it might be a little more streamlined than Ooh, Castle of like, Burgundy. Like That's what that. I've heard. I could be totally wrong. I like that. But it's, 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 it's everything you know and love, I'm sure. Everything I know and love. <laughs> as soon as I play it. Table, right? As soon as I play it. My number one is Alma Mater from... Oh, I forgot about that one! <laughs> <laughs> from Edgar Spiel. So this is like a renaissance theme, a university theme, um, and it's a game for... Looks delicious. <laughs> two to four players. Plays in about 90 to 150 minutes, so definitely on the heavier side. But I think this is from the same people that did like Queen Bra and things yeah, like that. And I love that. that game. It has worker placement, tile placement, hand management. So like all these mechanics that I'm like, mm, it's pretty cool. I'm, I've heard good things about it already, so I'd love to play. I'm, I'm sure a, it's a good one, yeah. Brian? So mine, my number one most desired game to play is just coming out. It is Dune Imperium Ooh, from yeah. the folks who made the Clank series, yes. Direwolf Digital. They worked in conjunction with Gale Force 9, who made the original Dune game, which I also haven't gotten to play. But now this really cool Dune movie is coming out, and cool. Dune Imperium yeah. is tying into that. Uh, it's got, it just looks so cool. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, I, I can't even talk about it. It's just like, why, why <laughs> can't I play this so game? <laughs> so that's my yeah. number one. Between all of our top five most wanted and the top ten games uh, lists that we just did, there are a lot of games There's that so we need to play that, or that I need to play. Oh, yes. That I haven't gotten a chance to based on uh, your recommendations. What are the games that you wish you had played in 2020 that yeah. you just haven't gotten to yet? Let us know your wish list in the comments, and we'd love to have that conversation with you. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Please like and subscribe.